Hello, my name is Brandon, and welcome to the next video in my series on basic statistics. If you're new to the channel, welcome, it is great to have you. If you're a returning viewer, it is great to have you back. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with classmates, colleagues, or friends, or anyone else you think might benefit from watching. You can also find a link in the description below to all of my playlists. It's basically a table of contents. And of course, please hit subscribe and click the bell notification if you haven't already. So now that we are introduced, let's go ahead and get started. So this video is the next in our series on model building in the GLM or the General Linear Model. So in this video, we will introduce a concept called effect coding. And it has to do with how we code certain variables when we're going from ANOVA or ANCOVA to regression. This video will happen completely within Excel. So if you look in the description, you will also find a link to a file that you can download and follow along if you like. So let's go ahead and get to work. So we will continue the process of introduction by demonstration in Excel in this case. So when moving from ANOVA or ANCOVA to regression under the GLM, we usually code one variable as all zeros. The all zero group is often a base, reference, or control group. However, not all situations have such a group. Another way of coding the independent variables of that group is called effect coding. And there are other ways too. So instead of zeros, the levels of one variable are all assigned negative ones, and the reference group is the grand mean, not one of the levels of the independent variables. So this has interesting implications that can also help us interpret our results, and actually, I kinda like it. So let's go ahead and hop into Excel and see how effect coding works. Okay, so here we are in Excel. Let's go ahead and take a look at effect coding. Now first, a lay of the land. Over here on the left, I have the ANOVA table in two forms. In columns A and B, we have the stacked version, and then columns D through F, we have the table version. It's the same data, just in a different format. Here in the middle, columns H through J, we have our traditional dummy coding that we're gonna fill in. And then columns L through N, we have our effect coding we will fill in. And what we will do is run tests on all three versions, the ANOVA, the dummy coding, and the effect coding, and then we'll see what our results give us and then compare them. Let's go ahead and get started. First thing we need are the means for our three years here. And remember, these are study skill scores for 24 students, eight of which are in their first year, eight in their second year, and eight in their third year. So let's do the average or the mean. So equals average. So there we have the mean study skill score for the eight students in each of the three years. Then we also want our grand mean, which is the mean of all the values. 74.25. So we have a mean of 70.75 for year one, 74.75 for year two, and 77.25 for year three. And then we have an overall mean of 74.25. Now let's go ahead and do a traditional ANOVA for these three years. And it's just a simple one-way ANOVA or single factor ANOVA. So we'll go up to data in the ribbon, data analysis. We will go to ANOVA single factor, click OK. Input range will be year one, two, and three all the way down to the values. We do have column grouping and labels in the first row. Our output range we will put at the very top here in P1. Go ahead and click OK. And here is our ANOVA single factor output. Now we should verify our means. So the mean for year one is 70.75. Then we have 70.75 over on the right. For year two, 74.75, also the same in our table. And then 77.25, again, same in our table. Here we can see our overall or omnibus F table, which shows us that we have an F value of 0.62137, a P value of 0.5468, so therefore our overall model here is not significant. And that should not surprise us too much. It's just a cursory glance at our means, 70.75, 74.75, and 77.25. There does not seem to be a whole lot of difference 
among those means. So we have a mean square between group of 86 and then within group, which is actually our error of 138.405. So here are our results for ANOVA single factor. Now let's go over to our coding data tables. So here in columns I and J, what we would traditionally do if we are converting sort of an ANOVA to a regression problem under the GLM, we would code these variables as zeros in both year one and, and year two. These first eight scores are year one scores, as we see over here. So we gave all of those a one and then a zero for year two. The middle scores here, we have a zero for year one and then a one for year two because they are year two scores. And then traditionally we would put zeros in the year three scores because they are neither year one or year two. And that's how we do it. Now let's go ahead and run a regression using the scores as our dependent variable and the years as our independent variables. So go ahead and go to data, data analysis. This time we want regression, click okay. Our Y range will be our scores here in column H. Our X range will be our dummy variables here in columns I and J. We do have labels. We'll leave the confidence level as it is. Output range, we'll put it on the same sheet and I will put that over in column X. This spreadsheet will get very large, I apologize. I'll try to zoom around as much as possible. I do want residuals, I'll go ahead and click OK. All right, so I'm gonna scroll over so you can see here. So what do we have? We have an R squared of 0 0.056, which is obviously not very high. And then we can see our F table here, our omnibus F table, is the exact same as we have in the single factor ANOVA. So we have our regression mean square of 86, our residual or error mean square of 138.405, that's the exact same. F of 0 0.62, 0 0.62, and then everything else is the same. So down here, we have our coefficients, and I'll talk more about these here in a second. So 77.25, negative 6.5, negative 2.5. And then here we have our residual output, which is the difference between our observed test score and the predicted, and of course the residual is the difference between those. So here is our output for the regular dummy coding. Now what I wanna go back and do is what we call effect coding. Now the way this is different is that instead of putting two zeros for our third group here, we put negative ones. So negative one, negative one, and then we fill those down. So here we have all zeros, here we have all negative ones. That's the only difference. Now let's go ahead and run a regression on this effect coding data set. So we'll go back to data, data analysis, regression. Our dependent variable now is column L. Our X range will be our two year scores here in columns M and N. Keep everything else the same. Our output range, we're gonna to wanna to scroll over to AH1, and we'll go ahead and click OK. So I'm gonna scroll over and zoom down just a tad so we can see almost everything. So take a look at this now. Now we have in our summary output for the effect coding, all of our summary output is the exact same. So our R squared is the same, our adjusted R squared is the same, standard error is the same, everything is the same in our summary output. Now look at the omnibus or overall ANOVA tables here. We have mean square of 86, mean square residual 138.4048, F significance, again, all the same. So the ANOVA tables for all three methods is the exact same. However, now look at our coefficients. In the middle part of our screen, we can see that the intercept is 77.25. Now remember, that was our dummy coding where we put zeros. Over here, where we use the effect coding, our intercept is 74.25. So what is the difference? So let me scroll back up. Go to our grand mean here. Our grand mean is 74.25. Well, if I go back to our intercept for the effect coding, what is our intercept? 74.25. Now look at the coefficient for the intercept for the dummy coding, 77.25. Now we go back over. Where do we see 77.25? Well, that is the mean for year three. See the difference here? 
Now, what this means is that when we are coding in these two different ways here, for the dummy coding, what we are saying is that group three or year three here is our base group. And when we arbitrarily define that as our base group, what happens is that our coefficient for the intercept is the mean for that group, which is 77.25, 77.25. Now, everything else is relative to that. And I'll talk more about that in a second. However, when we use effect coding, our coefficient for our intercept is the grand mean or the overall mean and everything else in the regression is relative to that. Now, of course, the ANOVA tables are the exact same. All of our summary statistics are the exact same. So why might we use effect coding instead of our traditional dummy coding? Well, when there's no natural base group, which in this case is the case, you know, there's nothing special about year one versus year two versus year three. They're all equally important in this data set. However, if you were to have some sort of control group or baseline group, then it might make sense to make that the variable that gets all the zeros. In this case, using negative ones, because there is no real base group here, what we do is we reset the regression to reference back to the overall grand mean and not that sort of base or control group. And in some ways that can make a lot more sense. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna grab this data and just copy it. So what does this mean in term, terms of our analysis and how can we you know, work with this to make sense of it? So let's just take one of the scores here. Now the first thing I will do to make it a little bit easier is to color code some of this data here. All right, now let's say I want to predict this score right here, which is the 17th observation, which is the first observation here in year three. Now our predicted score is 77.25. Why is that? Well, remember in dummy coding, we set year one and year two equal to zero. So the 77.25 actually comes from the coefficients above it. So to get that, it's very easy. It's just equal the coefficient of the intercept, which is 77.25 plus, and I'll do this, we don't have to do it. It's zero times the year one coefficient plus zero times the year two coefficient. And therefore we get our 77.25. Now what if I wanted the first score in year one? Well, that is gonna be the intercept plus one times the year one coefficient, because remember we coded that as a one plus zero, because it's year two, so year two times that coefficient, and we'll get our predicted score of 70.75. So of course to get the score for the first year of year two, similar process, so equals the intercept coefficient plus zero times year one plus one times year two, and we get 74.75. So by now you should know how to do that kind of stuff if you're uh, watching this video, I would at least assume. What about over here in the effect coding example? Notice that the predicted scores are the same. Doesn't matter which method we use, the predicted scores are the same because the overall model is the same. The only real difference is how we interact with the coefficients here in our table. So remember, everything in the effect coding example is relative to the overall grand mean. So 74.25 here, which is 74.25 in the grand mean. And then everything else is relative to that. So how do I get the predicted score for the first observation in year one? Well, same basic process, but we gotta remember how we coded it. So this is equals, the intercept, which is the overall grand mean of all the observations, plus one times the year one right here, plus zero times year two. 
when we get 70.75. Same thing we calculated over here. However, our base group was the overall data and not year three in this case. What about the first observation for the second year? Same process, equals intercept plus zero times year one, because it's a year two score, plus one times year two. So we get 74.75. Now what about a predicted score for year three? Same basic idea, but remember how we coded it. So equals the overall grand mean plus negative one times year one plus negative one times year two, 77.25. So you see how we get our predicted scores? The overall models are the exact same. The real difference is in how the regression coefficients lead to predicted scores. In the first example, in the dummy coding, we're basing it off a control or a baseline group. In the second example, where there is no natural control or baseline group, we're basing it off the overall mean. For some individuals, the first method might make sense, and for other individuals, the second method might make sense. Now, I will say that when you use most computer programs that actually do the ANOVA, like we did up here in the first test we did, they are by default using the typical or traditional dummy coding with zeros. So in this video, we saw how to use a technique called effect coding, where we coded our variables a bit differently using negative ones, and then we got different coefficients, and that allowed us to see the effects of each level of our independent variable. So I hope you found this video insightful and helpful. Thank you very much for your time, and look forward to seeing you again in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.